Today we're watching horrible motorcycle repair fails that we found on TikTok. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. We're joined by motorcycle expert and mechanic Aerie from Revzilla. And we're gonna find out how to avoid making potentially deadly mistakes when working on a bike. First clip. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Good yeah. save. Good save, yeah. He had the special clip on. Evidently, yeah. Did they actually snap? Dude, look like did they, they snap. Did they, I don't see how that would be. Oh, you know what they are? They're multi adjustable. They're like uh, those wonky ones that have like the X and Y that you oh, can adjust. Yeah. yeah. So, so you go yeah. sideways up. up. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Ari Henning. Um, I'm a lifelong motorcyclist. Uh, I am the host of the Shop Manual on the Revzilla channel, which is like a maintenance and repair mm -hmm. show. And then I also co host this show called CTXP with my buddy Zach. And he absolutely rips on a motorcycle, this guy. He can ride it fast, which is even cooler. So, like, typically everyone knows like a handlebar looks like, you know, shape of a mustache and uh -huh. it's connected to the top triple tree with, with its bolts. Mm -hmm. The clip ons actually connect to the fork tubes. That's why they call them clip on because they bolt onto the fork tubes mm -hmm. um, and they position the rider uh, lower kind of in a more hunch position so they're more common on sport bikes that's what this guy has but he looks like he's got some sort of adjustable contraption Ooh. Oh. yeah that was just a sharp edge in the road uh, this is one of those instances though where number one should have spent more money on higher quality components but number two part of the reason they didn't crash is they didn't react right they just like let the gyroscopic effect of the bike do its thing and the yeah. fact that they actually came to a stop without falling over I mean yeah well I think they couldn't react because they didn't have anything to grab onto. <laughs> fair enough yeah in any case you want to tighten stuff properly yeah maybe hoss on a little bit before you go hit the road and try and avoid those those kind of potholes because yeah. they're gonna suck either way Ari what do you think is this a harmless mistake or a deadly error I mean it's a near deadly error yeah honestly like that this this person is extremely lucky they didn't get slapped on the ground and run over by their own motorcycle right they say it can take up to four years to be a chef but with today's sponsor cook unity i can do it in minutes being a chef is all about strength precision and intuition impeccable cook unity is the first ever chef to you meal delivery service every meal is carefully crafted using fresh seasonal produce highlighting whole foods and supporting local suppliers with just a few clicks you can set up your likes dislikes and any dietary preferences from vegan paleo to gluten-free plus your subscription is super flexible pause skip two weeks or cancel at any time today i'll be preparing white truffle mac and cheese made by chef john delucci in new york chef delucci has been one of new york's most popular chefs leading restaurants like empire diner the waverly inn and the lion each meal arrives fully cooked so all you have to do is heat it up but it takes a skilled chef like me to know how long to oh wait the directions are right here on the meal Nice. Go to cookunity.com slash RMS50 or click the link in the description and use my code RMS50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. So this is why you do not lend your bike to people. Drilled into the frame oh. and put self tapping screws to pull the bearings. <laughs> and he's caused so much damage. Front. Are you kidding? So Get out of here. This is a bike he borrowed from somebody? And lowered the oh. rear bike and the front. So <laughs> lowered the rear. He's all squatted out. Yeah. And getting tank slappers. Oh my gosh. So I want to know more about like I want who, who borrowed the bike? Like that takes days of effort to screw a bike up that bad. Yeah. Okay, so this guy slammed the rear end of the bike, kept the front same height, so creates a little bit of squat. Yeah. What kind of problems does that create? Well, I'm assuming he did it to alleviate the problem of his legs being too short, because yeah. I don't know why else. You don't you don't want to lower a bike to the rear because that screws up the front geometry, it screws up the steering, and typically when people slam bikes, it's either for aesthetics or it's for actual performance, because if you lower your center of gravity, you can accelerate more. Mm -hmm. But if you only lower the back and you leave the front up, you're more inclined to wheelie, which is what you're trying to avoid. A way to avoid that would be to slide the forks up. Correct. You would slide right. the forks up in the triple clamp, which would lower the front end, but that also introduces some of its own problems. Sometimes the front wheel under full compression on brake will hit the radiator, especially on these inline fours. Right. I want to know their dynamic in this relationship. The friendship, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. what kind of person is that? He's like, no, 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 I know. Jared just needs me to, like, I'm going to fix his bike. He's going to be so stoked that I give it back to him. If you don't understand all the aspects that are going into the project, like, say you're going to check valve adjustments and you don't understand the importance of, of cam timing, mm -hmm. like, leave it to a professional. Sure. If you have your doubts. I uh -huh. like, you can see the reflection in the tank. I like that he's wearing nitrile gloves, but does not appear to be wearing a shirt. <laughs> That's a good combination. That's a good look. Oh, my, yeah, dude. My, look at that. Good freaking I, spot, I my shouldn't, guy. I shouldn't knock it too bad, though, because that's 
definitely a look I rock in the summer too. Okay, so what do we think? Harmless mistake, deadly error. <laughs> it's neither. It's not harmless because he messed up the motorcycle. Because he harmed it. Because he literally inflicted injury on the motorcycle. Right. But it's also, I mean, he did do the tank slapper, which is like, that it can, can be, be that can be deadly. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's like 75% towards deadly. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, sure. It's not quite deadly, but almost. A lady bought it and tried fixing it. She did cars, but she did great. Nothing's really great. Cars. But yeah. First problem. Look at those rollers. Ooh, full floating is right. Yeah, just take out a couple of buttons. Holy sh! No. She's not fixing this, right? It doesn't look like that. Looks like it should be totaled. Holy crap! Yeah, this thing got crashed hard. Yeah. Not to mention, there's no front axle bolt. That's a good way to lighten your bike. And then, like the disc itself, it's super bent. Yeah. Which, which really, like, like you can't crash a motorcycle and cause that kind of damage. That's like mm -hmm. inflicted from something else, like getting run over or falling out of the back of a truck or uh -huh. like falling off a lift or something. Man. Like text on screen says, "Let's make her mint and happy," which suggests that he's gonna fix this bike. This bike does not warrant repair. And I'm someone who really likes to try and fix things. Yeah. Turn this thing into scrap, man. Yeah. Use it, use it, recycle it. Purchasing this motorcycle was a deadly error. Someone <laughs> wasted their money and bought a dangerous motorcycle. So yeah, this thing is, yeah. like I said, we need to push it into a dumpster. Customer decided that he'd mount his own muffler. That's oh, great. get out of here. We encourage people working on their own stuff. I love it. Uh, Why are people so dumb? You just totaled your motorcycle according to insurance. This bike came in on a trailer. A customer said that it won't start, and probably a good thing that it didn't. <laughs> nice. I like that guy's take on it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we went to Home Depot. He got yeah. himself a nice, uh, it doesn't have any branding on it, and I can tell that the end cap isn't real carbon fiber. Like, how about the fact that this bolt is just, all right, he drilled into his swing arm, which is stupid, but the yeah. bolt that's sticking out, Pretty in my long. mind, yeah, you're just like, that's gonna like hang up on your pant leg or something yeah. or stab you in the leg. This guy doesn't understand that the ex the <laughs> swing arm, it moves. It goes like this. Your exhaust is supposed to be fixed. It's not supposed to move. So yeah, the swing arm is part of your rear suspension and uh, it allows the rear wheel to move and follow the road. So like, obviously that's important for comfort and traction and control. Yeah, you see how this exhaust isn't attached to it? <laughs> that's by design. So in, in the video here, the individual bolted the muffler to the swing arm <laughs> and the muffler is rigidly attached to the engine so it would not move. It would be a problem. It will eventually break. The thing with people working on motorcycles, like if you don't know how to work on your car, at least you're in a car in mm -hmm. a seat with a seatbelt with metal around you. Like mm -hmm. it just won't run, a wheel falls off. Like these are bad things that could happen to you, but like on a motorcycle, there's nothing protecting you. So right. like, if you are making your motorcycle more dangerous or unstable, it's really dangerous. Right, yeah. Try and avoid that. Again, not quite deadly, but you know, I'm gonna call it deadly because it's motorcycles. There's no cage around you. If you screw up, you're hitting the deck and that's just a hot mess. And so yeah, this is deadly. This is a deadly mistake. Customer says motorcycle oh, yeah. is losing power when accelerating. Oh the old the old, the old rudimentary uh, <laughs> trash control slipper clutch setup. Holy I've crap. never seen a sprocket that bad. So that's I, insane. I have. If you go to any mechanic that's been around for a while, mm -hmm. they will have one of those on the wall in the shop. Really? Yeah, because yeah. this this is a classic thing. People neglect their drivetrain so much uh -huh. that the teeth on the sprockets actually wear away and they don't take it into a mechanic until the thing doesn't go anymore <laughs> because the chain is literally just spinning on the sprockets or in this case the sprocket is spinning on the chains right yeah so unlike a car where you have a drive shaft that's going to the rear wheels with motorcycles you have a chain driven system so you have a front sprocket that's attached to your transmission on the on the engine side of things and on the rear wheel you have a rear sprocket yep. that's connected to the wheel and the chain that connects those two links and it's well, important that there's teeth on the sprocket yes. for the chain to hook onto yes this guy was like Teeth? How about no teeth? He forgot to do that like <laughs> three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, need, he needs dentures at this point. Yeah. On a motorcycle, you need to check your chain tension and lube it like every four to 500 miles. I usually recommend every other fill up of the gas tank. As the suspension flexes, um, the tension on the chain actually changes. So if it's too tight, uh, it'll restrict your suspension motion. It'll also put a lot of side load on the output shaft bearing and the wheel bearing. So that's bad. Mm -hmm. But if it's too loose, it might jump off the sprockets and that can be, that can be deadly. That can be bad because it can get wound up around the engine and mm -hmm. it can do all sorts of bad things. So you don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose and you certainly don't want it dry. Technically it isn't deadly because you can't no. ride it. Yeah, it's harmless. It's just, yeah. it's just embarrassing. Yeah. And shameful. <laughs> now the poster of this next clip was working on his bike and then discovered that he could only move the bike backwards. So with the help of some internet mechanics, he found the source of the problem. So let's take a look. Very curious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I get out of here. Bolt. 
<laughs> right between the chain and the case. What? And it created a one oh, the camera. It's like a little ratchet. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I bet he was like, there's something wrong with my crankshaft, yeah. there's something wrong with my clutch, yeah. and it's just a tiny little six millimeter bodywork bolt yeah. that fell behind his counter shaft sprocket. And this is also a prime example of why you check the simple stuff first. So yeah. like, what are the things connecting your rear wheel to the rest of your motorcycle that might prevent yeah. it from rolling? Your drivetrain, so like, yeah. inspect that carefully. <laughs> oh, it's not deadly, I mean, yeah. it's just like, it sounds like it was a good riddle for <laughs> him and a bunch of Reddit folks. So like, total yeah. harmless mistake, and frankly, very entertaining. Yeah, really cool. I love it. Oh, I know what's going on oh, here. Oh, yep, yep, yep. You can see it. <laughs> yeah. You can see the, the insulator. That's awesome. <laughs> Spark plug in the head there. The, the porcelain, it's supposed to be like crimped on. Yeah. And the porcelain has, has come free and it is being pushed up and out by the compression of the engine, which is like a pretty unique situation. Yeah, I've never seen that. I wonder if it's still sparking. I've never seen this happen, but I can understand why it would happen because it is just the porcelain insulates the electrode that goes down the center of the spark plug. It needs to conduct across the gap. That's how you get ignition, right? That's how you get combustion. The porcelain here has obviously come loose and is getting pushed out by the compression. This or is a two dollar and seventy nine cent fix. <laughs> the good thing about the internet is that, like things like Reddit, people post stuff like this. You got a lot of people who are not trying to screw you over. You yeah. know, like you take this to a mechanic who's a jerk, and he's gonna tell you, yeah. Oh, total oh, engine rebuild. Yeah, yeah sorry. We got we got to rebuild this. Off. Actually, you need a new bike. I got one over here. Oh yeah, what a problem. And it's a two dollar fix. I think it's pretty harmless. It's harmless in yeah. so much as like no one's gonna get injured here. Their yeah. their bank account's just gonna get dinged by the by the mechanic that doesn't know what's going on but yeah. it's uh pretty bizarre virago off of facebook marketplace for a hundred dollars and here's the motor right here i've just got it taken apart check out why it was only a hundred dollars kind of looks like classic KB classic attempt well. absolutely and that is exactly what it is you can see well, at least they took the case off most people just try and stick it on from the outside <laughs> right, right. This is why you don't put JB Weld on the inside of your engine case. I mean, this, okay. Yeah. Has a uh, 16 year old Jeremiah done this? You bet your ass he has. Absolutely. We've all done this. They did try from the inside. Which is good. Yeah. Which so, is, probably what happened is they pulled this cover at some point, they put the cover back on, and he over tightened that bolt. It cracked, yep. right? And then the crack got worse and worse. And this is important that I don't have a crack here because oil comes out of that crack. You want to keep the oil in the motor. That's yeah. a fundamental aspect That's... of uh, engines. But I think in this situation, JB Weld on the outside would have been good. What he would have been better with on the inside, it was RTV. Part of the problem here is the oil, because of the expansion and contraction of the aluminum, it gets under the JB Weld and eventually it's going to delaminate. It's going to come off like a scab. Yeah. Whereas RTV will seal it's elastic, it doesn't care about the heat, and it doesn't care about the oil, so like, yeah. this could have been a fix. Harmless mistake that, as we have admitted, we have both made in the past. Everyone, it's like a rite of passage <laughs> as a mechanic. You're gonna try and use JB Weld for something, and it's not gonna work, and then you learn the lesson. Yep, but you gotta learn. You gotta learn. You learn more from your failures, okay? This bike has been sitting for about, I don't know, I think it's like 10 years. Yeah, okay. it's an old R1. Old R1, yeah. Pretty low mileage, but I'll show you guys something. CB Carbs, Honestly, RB yeah. Baby. Hey, is it our same level. guy? This bike's been sitting. Oh. It is! It is! Yeah, it's the same orange dude. gloves. Same tats. Oh, what is wow. going on? Oh, they put, they put sealant around the airbox? What the hell? Barely even used. Oh, it's just the foam itself disintegrated. You know what I think happened here? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that filter. Yeah. Someone sprayed a bunch of starting fluid into that intake trying to start the bike. Uh -huh. and melted the rubber. Like typically when rubber disintegrates, it either hardens or it turns to like dust. Yeah. And that is like melted and did he make his own air filter? Dude, maybe he did. That's a no-no. Just stick to stock people. Listen, the way air filters work is they have to restrict air to remove the <laughs> that you don't want in your engine. If you have increased yeah. airflow, you also have increased penetration of debris. You yeah. cannot have one without the other. What's one of the first things you do if you look at a garage find motorcycle? Uh, the first things I do is I look in the gas tank. That's gonna let you know if it's got like sludge in there, if it looks like someone's like making stew, mm -hmm. you're just in for a world of hurt. Like it's just, yeah. the tank's gonna be, have to get cleaned out, it might be rusty, the fuel system is going to be junk, and that's just that's a really common problem, and it's a really hard problem to solve. Yeah. Oh boy. I mean, it's a harmless mistake. It is a stupid mistake. The bike's not going to run. There's not. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not going to harm an individual. Oh. Oh. Busted okay. tire. We were talking about tire age. Yeah. That appears to be a Dunlop GPR 300, <laughs> which I would never put on a thousand cc motorcycle. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh. So the chain snapped. <laughs> 
We talked about this. Yeah. Dude, you can get your leg torn off. Like yeah. you can get you can get mortally wounded by a chain snapping. Like yeah. number one, it can whip you and like tear your leg apart. I mean, there is a lot of kinetic energy and it is a steel chain. It is very strong. Yeah. Um, it is not going to yield. Everything else is. So yeah. Ooh. Like the push rod for the clutch. Ooh. Dude, the water chain, pump. Dude, oh dude, chain snappings are so scary. Yeah. You want to avoid that. What is the main reason a chain will snap? They they will wear enough that the the pin going through the bushing will actually fail. So mm -hmm. like it gets like eroded. It's round, it'll get chewed away, uh -huh. and eventually it will snap. But yeah, it's a it's a dangerous scenario. It is kind of a worst case scenario, frankly. Look at that. That yeah, hits that you. That got chewed up, man. Imagine so yeah, you had that did on the protect back. that did protect their leg because otherwise yeah. that would have slapped him right in the back of the thigh. We're learning a little bit about this individual. Uh -huh. You typically extend the swing arm because you're like you're drag racing. So uh -huh. you're you're putting a lot of load into that drive train. And if you're not taking care of your chain, which as Sprockets tell us he wasn't, you can snap it and bad things can happen. So like it's not a harmless mistake at all. No, this is uh deadly for sure. Think about like your buddy like whipping you with, with a whatever towel. a towel or a rope yeah. and then imagine that that is a chain <laughs> and that it's going whatever i don't know how fast but a lot faster than someone's going to be whipping you with yeah it'll it'll probably break flesh yeah. it's not good yeah scary don't do this yeah. yeah deadly deadly no 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 as a motorcycle mechanic i thought i'd seen it all <laughs> what why there's so many other things you could use <laughs> They thought they were being clever? I don't know. This seems like this someone seems like did they this did to it. make they for did a TikTok. Yeah. yeah, come so, on. Get broken it. lever happens all the time. I keep vice grips in my toolkit so that you can clamp it on and you have some way of getting it down. They put an ancient faucet, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think this is probably just somebody trying to make a cute video. Yeah, yeah. Good effort, though. Good effort. Harmless? Right. Yes. Yeah, very harmless. Clever? Mm, yeah, you know. Whatever. Did you get us your f***? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. If you want to see even more mechanical mayhem, click right here. Ari, yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming out. Totally. Uh, where can people check you out? Our videos are on the Revzilla YouTube channel, and then I'm on Instagram at Ari Henning211. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. And we have a new Instagram page for this channel, Real Mechanic Stuff. Follow us over there. We've got a bunch of cool clips. Thank you so much.